So it's important to understand that almost everything you see on a forex chart can be read like a book. Every candle is a letter. Every candle pattern is a word. And every technical analysis can be read like a paragraph or a sentence. Almost every single thing you see on the chart conveys some sort of message to the reader or viewer or trader. If you can understand how to read Forex like a book, you're going to have a much simpler time. So today I'm going to help you learn how to understand. I'm going to provide you value by showing you how you can read the Forex charts like a book. So firstly, I need to compare exactly how to read Forex like a book. And I'm going to break that down for you today. So first things first, we start small. Each candle of the chart can be comparable or similar to a letter or character from an alphabet or a language. So just when each candle is alone, it doesn't convey or give you much information, but when they're paired together, almost like a word, it can actually tell you a certain information on what it's going to do, what it did, what it's doing right now. And if you can read that, then you'll know how to trade Forex better. So starting small, each candle can be comparable to a character or letter from an alpha. Multiple characters in a row or multiple candles in a row make up a word or make up a candlestick pattern. And the great part about today's video is I'm not only going to provide you value on how exactly this works, but I'm going to go ahead and show you live examples. I'm going to show you on the charts. So we're going to talk about it. And then we're also going to show you visually for the visual learners because it's important to understand the concept. And then I'm going to apply it and show it how it works on the charts. Once you learn it, you're going to be like, man, I can't believe I've been reading charts wrong this whole time. Now, when you get multiple candlestick patterns in a row or a long stretch of the chart, that can be comparable to a sentence. So when you have a candlestick just by itself, it's kind of hard to understand what it's going to do, but you might have a slight, very small idea. Now, when there's at least a couple of those candles in a row, it forms a word and a word can convey a little bit of information, but the most important and the best part of reading a chart is when you get a nice sentence. That way it can tell you exactly what you need to know. And there's many different sentences in the charts. And today we're going to go over a few really strong key sentences that you can look for and read in the charts that will give you a good clue to what's going on. So just as I mentioned, how we like to compare each candle is a character or letter from a language. When these characters are put together, they form words and words can convey a little bit of information, nothing too much, but can give you a little clue to what's going on. So one of the first words that I like to look for, something that's a little bit easier to read, is the three bullish candle pattern or three bearish candle pattern. Either way, whether it's in a bullish or bearish direction, when you have three strong candles with smaller wick, but mostly three candles in a row with a good amount of gain on each candle, you have a clue to what's going on. And when you have a sign like this, this tells us something very important. And this is where the reading really starts to take place. This is really, this is where it's really important to actually understand the language, not just know the language, but understand. It. So this word for us tells us that OK, so if we see it's bullish and we have three candles like this in a row, this is a bullish sign for us. Now you have to ask yourself, why is this a bullish sign? This is the most important part and this is the value I'm going to provide today. So this word tells us that price is very bullish right now. And that's because when you have three candles in a row like this, it's telling us a lot of buy positions were taken in this first candle. Normally, when you have a lot of buy positions taken in the first candle, normally the market is at a pretty balanced level or even a bearish level, meaning that price is going to go down. You're going to see a lot of red come into this second candle, but we never had that. We had another second candle form with once again, a lot of bullish momentum to the upside. So once again, you should expect at least a little bit of retracement, but you got a third candle in a row with no retracement. That just means that the market is very imbalanced at the moment. And it means that the market is mostly together looking for buys in these areas, executing buy orders, putting in high leverage buys, 
whatever it may be. But overall, there is a lot of volume coming in in the form of buys in these areas. And especially when you don't see much retracement or much red, that means not a lot of people are selling. So this is a good time to look for buys. Now, this is the most important thing to understand here today. This is only, like I said, this is only a word. It's not a whole sentence. And sometimes this can only be one small piece to the whole pie. So if you base your entire projection of where price is going to go off of one single word, it's not going to work out. You need to have a full sentence to really understand and get a good idea of what's going on. However, each and every single word that the chart forms can help you a little bit. So this can be something that's very strong and important, but it may not necessarily be good to base your entire trade off of just one single word. So if we look in the charts and we can actually see this example happen very often. So what we're looking for is three candles in a row, something similar like this, where there's not a lot of typical retracement. So we have one very bearish candle here, another pretty bearish candle and a third candle here. This one had a little bit of retracement, as you can see on the wick here, but not much. So this is a pretty strong move here. And this word tells us that at the moment, there's a lot of selling pressure coming in. So you're going to get quite a bit of selling momentum off of that. Now, let's be the devil's advocate here and, and we'll show you. You're not going to really see much from the other side. Here we only have two green candles going up, two green candles going up. Here we have three, but it's not like three really bullish candles in a row. And as you can see, it never went and continued up because we never had that. We don't see it here. We don't see it here. Where do we see it next? Well, technically, this is a little bit of a broken version of it, but we have a nice bullish candle here, a nice bullish candle here. We skip this candle and we have a nice bullish candle here. Or we could even go further more and show it here. We have a very bullish candle here, bullish candle here. This one's not as bullish. So I wouldn't really take this as uh, the correct spelling, I guess you could say. But either way, it just goes to show that the more bullish these candles are looking, and as long as you have three in a row, you're going to see some bullish momentum off of that or some bearish momentum from the other side. Now, you can't, like I said, you can't base your entire projection or trade off of that alone, but it's important to look out for this because every single word that you can understand conveys a little bit of information and it may help you down the line. So that's just one of the words I'm going to cover. But today, what I really want to get to is sentences. And we're going to add another factor into our teaching here. And it's something important to understand. So if candles are the words for the charts, we can then say that indicators are the pictures, are the pictures in the book. So if reading the candles and the charts is like reading the words in a book, the indicators are almost like the pictures of the book. They're there to help you to visualize and see the data in a visual way, uh, sometimes even making you see data that you may have missed by not reading correctly. Now your mind, when you're reading the charts, can imagine some of this data, but indicators are a great tool to help you visualize and picture exactly what's going on. So when you can add indicators to your charts, it's like adding pictures to a book. It's going to help you to visualize and make the story a little bit easier to read. I never say, you know, indicators are a bad thing. I don't think you should base your trading just off of indicators alone. That would be trading just off of pictures alone. But if you can add pictures to give you and assist you in your trading, it's going to help you tremendously. So we're going to get on to a couple sentences now. These are sentences that you can read from the charts and it's going to help you a lot in your trading. Let's get into that. So the next sentence I'm going to break down here is one that's going to help you a lot to figure out where people are placing their trades, where they're setting their stop losses, because that's very important as a trader to understand. So you know where the momentum is going to flow to or in and out of when you're in a trade, uh, when you have price cross certain you know, points in the chart. 
whatever it may be, it's very important to understand this. And this is a very easy right way to read it. And we're actually going to, like I said, we're going to use an indicator to help us to understand. This is going to help us visualize a lot better. So the indicator we're going to use here is called a volume profile. I'm going to go into the settings here in a minute. But what's most important to understand is this is a picture that shows us where a lot of the volume comes in on a horizontal level. You know, a lot of indicators show you volume on a vertical level, right? It can show you per candle, like, oh, this candle has a lot of volume in it here. This one has a lot of volume in there, blah, blah, blah. Right? Like if we turn on our volume here, we can see, you know, this specific candle right here, this red giant red one has a lot of volume. That's great to understand. But what's even more important to understand is where the volume is on a vertical level, because this will give us ideas of important levels. So this is a picture that can really assist us in our trading game. So as you can see, so as you can see, a lot of volume came in on this level here and a lot of volume came in on this level here. Now, before I break this down, let me open this up for you so you can see exactly what I'm using here. I'm using a volume profile. There's many different volume profiles out there. This is the one I like to use. Uh, it's called volume profile slash fixed range. We got number of bars, 150, row size, 100. Everything else, you can just leave it default. Okay, so now we're we can see where the volume is on a horizontal level. We're going to turn the indicator off. Now we know two things. We know a ton of volume came in here. A ton of volume came in here. So that tells me two simple things. We are going to read this chart like a book. A ton of people were taking buys in here and in here. How do I know their buys? Because price came up, pulled back into here. Typically, when you have a retracement, most of the volume in here are going to come in as buys. Uh, you can assume there's sales, whatever you want to do. Point is, whether there's sales or buys here, there's going to be buys here. People will 100%, I can say confidently, have bought here. At any point on the chart, people are always buying or selling. But what's important is understanding where most of the people are buying and selling. And that's happening right in here. Right here, we also had a lot of people buying, taking buy positions. And then up here, we probably have a lot of people taking sell positions. It's came up to a peak. People are most likely selling, looking for price to come back down here. So I can read a couple things off this chart. I can read that people bought here, prices moved up there. And it's important to understand, you gotta look from the perspective of a trader. If you enter a trade here on this line, where are you putting your stop loss? First likely place for you to put your stop loss is going to be somewhere below this low here. So let's just go ahead and assume it's like that. The second spot you can assume somebody put their stop loss is maybe somewhere below here. So for these people, most likely looking for some sort of one to one, right? Uh, these people could also be looking for a one to one, a one to five, a one to two, whatever it may be. But either way, most of the people buying here are putting their stop loss here or putting it down here. Typically, we can assume you know, I've been trading for many, many years. I put my stop losses here. Other people put their stop losses there. Once you've been in the game for a while, you'll understand these are guaranteed spots where people are putting their stop loss. So what does that mean? That tells us one thing. We just read this like a book. And now that gives us and conveys information to us. That tells me a couple of things. That tells me that if price breaks below here, we're going to have a lot of people's positions get liquidated. And that's going to drive selling pressure. It's going to drive bearish pressure even harder if this gets broken. If this gets broken, same exact thing. Okay. Now, we need to do the same thing for the opposite side here. So we have people taking sell positions here. Most likely, they're placing their stop losses where? The first likely spot is going to be above the previous high there something like that. So that tells us if price breaks this, we're most likely going to have some bullish momentum takeover. So we have this all marked out now. Let's go ahead and play out the chart and see exactly what happened. So here we are. As you can see, price couldn't go higher than this. So a lot of the people who took sales in these positions are doing very well. They took the right trade here. And a lot of the people who took buys on this, on this level of volume that we saw come in, a lot of them got ended up 
most likely getting stopped out when price broke below here. And as you can see, you can read this little chunk of the chart here like a book as well. You can see that price made a huge push to break this zone here. We had a lot of stop losses get liquidated. We had a lot of people get liquidated from their stop losses. Next thing you know, a little bit of buying pressure comes back in, but most likely a lot of people are adding more selling positions because these guys are already winning. These sellers are already winning. They're only adding on to their position. So as you can see, these wicks here also convey a message. They tell us that a lot of selling pressure came in here and pushed candles down. And right after that, as you can see, look at all this bearish momentum that came in. Like we said earlier, look what we have here. We have three very bullish candles coming into the market. That's a word right there. That tells us only one thing that tells us bearish. So now we have a whole entire sentence, almost paragraph, I would say, telling us that price is definitely, definitely going down from here. Then we also have a word saying bearish. It can only mean another thing. That means we're going to have a lot of bearish movement off of this area. And look what happened. We had so much bearish movement off of that. So that is how you read like a book. Now we're going to show you some more examples. Now the final question is what kind of book are you using? What brand of book are you using? That is just as important. And that's why I want to talk about having a good broker because it doesn't matter if you can read candles and candlesticks and patterns. If you don't have a good broker, you're going to be limiting yourself. So if you haven't already found a good broker, obviously go out there and find something, do your own research that is good for you. However, if you want to take my word for it, go ahead and sign up with Hanko Trade. I've been with Hanko Trade for over many years. They have been reliable, fast, efficient, and they do not put a cap on my trading. You don't want your trading skills to be capped by your broker, you know, not executing trades as fast as you would like not putting you in the positions that you want to be in. It's very important to have a good broker. So if you would like to sign up with Hango Trade, I will leave a link in the description down below. Go ahead and sign up with them. They will provide you a tremendous amount of value by being with them over time versus some of the other brokers out there. So let's get into the next part here. Now, a lot of you might be curious about, you know, why the trend reverse here? Well, let's go ahead and clear this and let's look at the exact same thing. Volume profile. Let's see, where is the volume coming in? Well, we had a lot of volume come in here, a lot of volume in here, and a lot of volume in there. Let's just mark these three zones. So here, for sure, we had selling pressure coming off of here. And same thing in this area, probably quite a bit of selling pressure. So if you're taking a sell here, where are you putting your stop loss? Most likely either in here or you are taking it above here. If you're taking a sell here, you're most likely setting your stop loss above there. So like I said, you know, we'll mark out the stop loss areas again. Mark out the top of that, top of that, and then top of this. So these blue areas actually get rid of everything else. These blue areas are where people are most likely going to be placing their stop losses. So if we get a break of these areas, we're most likely going to see price continue higher off of them. So let me go ahead and undo this. Like I said, it's so easy to read. All right, price came up. We had a very close call here, but it could not maintain above there. So it came up and then eventually when we finally had a nice break of that, we had enough momentum to actually push up, break above that, and push even higher and higher and higher until we hit a point like this where price could not really maintain above this as much. This is where we're going to have a lot of selling pressure coming back into the market. So it's very, like I said, it's very easy to read the charts like a book if you can just understand a few sentences. Now I'm going to continue to teach more and more sentences throughout my YouTube videos. But today I just wanted to cover a couple important ones that I use. Um, this video is getting kind of long. I don't want to hold you up, 
but I hope that this provided some sort of value for you and will help you read charts even just a little bit better. All right, well, thank you for watching. And as always, please like the video if you enjoyed the content. Take it easy.